Mr. President, for months now, American families have struggled with the growing burden of inflation. New data shows just how bad things have gotten. Last month, consumer prices increased at the fastest pace in 40 years. Now, I'd like to take a little walk down memory lane, Mr. President. The last time the American people endured price spikes like this, Eye of the Tiger was one of the top songs on the radio. I'm sure the senator from Delaware remembers that very, very, very well. The world had yet to be introduced to the Nintendo and Mario, um, and consumers were anxiously awaiting the release of the first cell phone, which weighed in at a whopping two pounds. I remember those unwieldy telephones well. Over the last four decades, of course, a lot has changed. And I'm not just talking about technology. The attacks of September the 11th, wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the Great Recession. Even during the first year of the pandemic, inflation didn't come close to hitting the heights that it has today. Between March 2020 and February 2021, the inflation rate never topped 2%. There were countless reasons for us to be optimistic. We had three highly effective vaccines with shots going into the arms of millions of people every day. Schools were reopening. Employees were returning to work and the American people began to discover a new semblance of, of normal post-COVID. But the administration ignored all of this progress because they had another plan in mind. They seized on what one House Democrat described as a, quote, tremendous opportunity to restructure things to fit their vision. They crafted a nearly $2 trillion piece of legislation that included their ideological priorities and tried to brand it as necessary pandemic relief. But we know that only about 10% of that $2 trillion expenditure actually went to COVID-19. Less than 1% went for vaccine. What it did include was backdoor funding for Planned Parenthood, a blank check for mismanaged union pensions plans, money for climate justice. It was easy to see through the COVID relief facade. Well, as our colleagues pushed this bill forward, they ignored warning signs from leading economists that this kind of spending chasing limited goods and services could trigger inflation. Larry Summers, who served as Secretary of Treasury during the, Clinton, the uh, Obama administration, even predicted that this package could, and I quote, set off inflationary pressures of a kind we have not seen in a generation. Our colleagues couldn't be convinced to change course and look where we are now as a result. We're experiencing inflation of a kind that we've not seen in a generation. Last month, prices jumped a whopping 6.8% from the previous year, marking the sixth consecutive month in which inflation has topped 5%. Now, when concerns were raised about this, the Federal Reserve claimed that this inflation was transitory. In other words, it was a passing moment. But the longer and longer inflation continues to rise and continue to be a problem, it's looking less and less transitory and more and more frightening. The reason it's frightening, of course, is because particularly people on fixed incomes are seeing less and less buying power for each dollar they spend. It is, some have said, a hidden tax on the American people, which describes its impact very well. Well, month after month, the data has now demonstrated that this is not just transitory, and it isn't just a blip on the radar of our economy. Inflation is running much hotter than expected, and things are not expected to cool down anytime soon. As families prepare for the Christmas holiday season, they're bracing their wallets for higher than normal expenses. And one of the biggest hits is for grocery bills, hardly something optional. Breakfast on Christmas morning is sure to cost a lot more than it did just a year ago. Egg prices are up 8%. Bacon costs a whopping 21% more 
than it did just a year ago. Dinner, it won't be any cheaper either. Prices are up for everything from ham to salad dressing to pie. Cooking that meal will cost you a lot more too. Electricity prices are up 6.5%, and anyone cooking on a gas range will shell out 25% more than they did last year. If you're traveling to see your family, extended family this year, you better start saving for it now. Gas prices are up a whopping 58%, the largest increase since 1980. Of course, this ignores the rising costs of gifts sitting under the Christmas tree, if you can get them because of broken and delayed supply chains. So the new cars, the washing machines, and sofas countless families have purchased this year, all of those cost more. You would think that um, our Democratic colleagues that are proposing another $5 trillion in spending under the so-called BBB, or Build Back Better bill, you would think they would view this as with caution and back off of their plans, or at least tap the brakes for a second round of unnecessary spending. Unfortunately, that does not appear to be the case. In fact, the Senate Majority Leader, Senator Schumer, is trying to double down on this next round of inflationary spending. We know that every trick in the book has been employed to try to make the BBB, the Build Back Better, Build Back Broke, Build Back Bad, Build Back Bankrupt, you call it what you will, but our Democratic colleagues have used every gimmick in the book to make the price of this bill look as small as possible. Of course, they started with the chairman of the Budget Committee. Senator Sanders wanted to spend $6 trillion more. That was pared down to $3.5 trillion. Now they claim it's only $1.75 trillion. In order to achieve that number, they've gamed the tax code to fund part of the bill while handing out tax breaks to millionaires and billionaires in relief for state and local taxes. And they've strategically chosen start dates, sunsets, and expiration dates that make these programs appear deceptively to cost less. One of our colleagues acknowledged that this is disingenuous advertising and even told Senator Graham, the senator from South Carolina, that he knew that this score that they were promoting was full of gimmicks. Of course, that's a lot different than the president himself who said this bill will cost zero. Now, everybody knows that's not true, but there had been some debate about what the honest score would be, even with all the gimmicks. But if the temporary provisions were extended as we all know they would be. There is no such thing as a temporary government program around here. Or as Ronald Reagan said, it's the closest thing to eternal life is a temporary government program. This legislation will cost a lot more than they admit. And we now know how much that will be. Senator Graham, who serves as a ranking member on the Budget Committee, asked the Congressional Budget Office to provide a more accurate cost estimate for this legislation. Others, like me, and, uh, asked the CBO and the Joint Ta Committee on Taxation to give us an updated estimate. There's been a lot of requests made to come up with an accurate truth in advertising score for this huge bill. Last week, we got what we asked for. We finally received the true score for this legislation. And it's a whole lot more than the American people were told and much more than they have bargained for. Let's start with the cost provision of just one part of this bill, the expanded child tax credit. This expansion initially came on the scene as a temporary measure in the first partisan spending bill just nine months ago. So this actually builds on the $2 trillion our colleagues passed at the beginning of this year. The very first payments had barely gone out the door when our friends on the other side of the aisle been, had called for these temporary provisions to be made permanent. Our colleagues knew that a permanent expansion would have been far too expensive, so they operate, opted for a temporary extension. Earlier drafts of this bill would have extended this policy through 2025. As time went on, the price tag was still too high 
So Democrats scaled it back to a one-year extension, but still nothing has changed. Calls to make this temporary provision permanent have not gone away, and I see no indication that our colleagues will ever be content to let this extension expire after just one year. Our colleagues on the other side of the aisle say this provision will cost taxpayers $185 billion, as if that were a bargain. The latest estimate from the CBO places the actual cost at roughly $1.6 trillion. You heard that right. Our colleagues across the aisle said it would just cost $185 billion, but the latest estimate from the Congressional Budget Office placed the actual cost during the 10-year budget window at roughly $1.6 trillion, nine times higher than what Democrats had been telling the American people. The true cost of this one provision is nearly, uh, is nearly as high as what our colleagues said the entire package would cost. Then you add in the other higher than promised expenses, the true cost of payoffs and subsidies, subsidies to organize labor. Allowing dues to become tax deductible will cost taxpayers billions more than advertised. But I'll give them credit about one thing. They are transparent when it comes to subsidizing more frivolous lawsuits against small businesses by giving a permanent tax cut to trial, trial lawyers. But when you add up all of the not-so-temporary provisions, the Congressional Budget Office says this bill will cost $4.9 trillion during the first 10 years. Not $1.75 trillion, not zero, but $4.9 trillion. Deficits and debt would increase by a staggering $3 trillion. In other words, borrowed money that the next generation, or maybe next two generations, will have to repay. Which makes President Biden's comment about zero um, even more bizarre. When it comes to solving our country's biggest problems, our colleagues across the aisle have proven themselves to be a one-trick pony. Whether the American people are facing a pandemic, a sluggish economic recovery, red-hot inflation, or any combination of crises, President Biden and our Democratic colleagues here in Congress think trillions of dollars in new spending is the best path forward. The first round of reckless spending hurt our economic recovery and sent the American people on a wild inflationary ride. Our colleagues continue to ignore clear signals from the economy, including warnings by Democratic economists about the consequences to unchecked spending. And we're now experiencing the highest inflation in a generation. This second round of spending would usher in more inflation, higher deficits, and even a greater financial trouble for the American people. The American people have clearly suffered enough, and it's time to simply put the Build Back Bankrupt bill out of its misery. Mr. President, I yield the floor.